So I want to get a bit more confident speaking on camera and uh, a bit better at editing videos as well. So I've decided to do a few more videos where I just talk at the camera about something I know about uh, and see how it goes. Hopefully I'll get better with each one. So I thought I'd talk about something which I'm very good about talking about, which is myself, uh, and also cookbooks, because I like to cook. I thought I'd take you on my journey with cookbooks uh, and talk through a few cookbooks which have really kind of inspired me and uh, changed the way that I think about cooking. The first cookbook which I kind of bought for the sake of it being a cookbook and wasn't just given to me as a student cookbook was this. This is The Food Lab by J. Kenji Lopezalt. And uh, I suppose it's a, bit, it's a bit of a cult classic now. So about five years ago, this was all over YouTube, people were talking about it. You'd see it on Binging with Babish videos. You'd say, oh, I'm cooking these chicken wings. I'm going to add a bit, of, uh, a bit of baking soda so that they're extra crispy, or I'm going to do this or do that. And it's, you know, a J. Kenji Lopez alt trick. Um, and I think he really captured people's imaginations with uh, his approach towards cooking and uh, his uh, attempts to really think of new ways to do kind of time old dishes. I remember reading uh, the first few chapters on Boxing Day and uh, it tells you, it's quite bold, it tells you how to, how to fry an egg or how to cook an egg, which you know most cookbooks aren't so presumptuous to assume that you really don't know how to do that. Um, but you, know, you learn so much in the process. Uh, and so, yeah, I, <laughs> this book's a thousand pages. I've read the entire thing cover to cover and um, you know, that probably took about a year, but it's just a testament to, to how engaging this book is. It's not really just about recipes, it's about thinking scientifically about the kind of processes. The one recipe which I think was the most eye-opening was uh, pasta with uh, garlic sauce done three ways. It's a really simple recipe. It's um, just pasta, olive oil, garlic, and maybe some chili flakes, if I remember correctly. And uh, what it teaches you is uh, essentially how to make an emulsion. That really simple emulsion and learning how to do that and being amazed at how kind of thick it was uh, really opened my eyes to a, you know, a whole different way of cooking. You know, using the same ingredients but getting something completely different. And so that's why this really kind of stands there and uh, stands up there as one of the books that changed the way I think about cooking. Book number two. This is one I really wish that more people knew about. I feel like you talk to any chef, you talk to anybody who knows about food and they'll know who Elizabeth David is. You know, incredibly uh, influential, incredibly important figure for food in England. You know, she introduced French and Mediterranean food to the UK and kind of, you know, it became part of home cook's vocabulary and it really wasn't before then. And the only reason I picked up this book was because I was moving to Edinburgh and I could only really bring what I could take in my rucksack. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Kenji's book, as much as I love it, is the size of two or three house bricks and uh, didn't really make the cut. But I was at my grand's house and she had all of these old penguin books. Uh, I saw it on the shelf and said, oh, I'll, I'll borrow that. And uh, started reading it on the train. And the first 100 pages of this book, or near enough, are nothing to do with recipes or ingredients or anything like that. Elizabeth David talks about her time in France, uh, her memories of uh, staying with this French family, I think, kind of north west of Paris, I think, and uh, the way that they thought about food, the way that the, the mother or the maid went off to the market and would bring stuff back, and uh, the way she writes about food and the way she writes about the culture that the French have around food is so evocative. Uh, you just can't help but want to eat the same stuff and you can't help but want to think about the ingredients in the same way. Um, so that's why I'd really recommend just, just picking up a copy and reading it for yourself because it's quite hard to really express it in the same way Elizabeth David does. And I think <laughs> one of the testaments to just how good a writer she is is that the recipes in these books, uh, they're, not, they're not actually that good or they're, <laughs> they're not that easy to follow. Like... She was writing for kind of 1950s housewives and she kind of assumes quite a lot of, a lot of knowledge and expertise and she'll say, 
you know, fairly rough measurements and fairly vague instructions and kind of hope that you get the right idea. Um, and so there's a lot of room for error depending on how you're cooking the dish. Um, but, it, you know, it's not the recipes that make these books stand out. It's, it's really just the way she writes about, writes about cooking and, and that's what's been so inspirational, not just to me, but lots of other cooks as well. If you look at uh, writers like Claudia Roden, who wrote like the book on Middle Eastern food, uh, one of her huge influences was Elizabeth David. Or more modern writers like Nikki Zegnet, who wrote The Flavor Thesaurus and I think has a regular column in The Economist Lifestyle magazine. Uh, she talks about Elizabeth David as well. And I mean, there's probably not a British cook who doesn't owe some kind of a debt to Elizabeth David and her works. And if you haven't read these books, I'd, I'd highly recommend picking up this one in particular, French Provincial Cooking. And uh, just reading the first 50 pages and just her talking about her experiences in France. Because I think you'll find it uh, enlightening. Book number three is another sciencey one. It is On Food and Cooking by Harold McGee. So um, this is just a book which pretty much any question you ever, have, ever had about uh, chemistry in the kitchen, this will answer it and probably give you three new questions which uh, you didn't even know you wanted the answer to before. Um, I found this in a charity shop in Edinburgh and I'd heard about it from uh, Kenji. Where Kenji works at Serious Seats, I've heard it said that uh, all new employees are given a copy of this book when they first enter the company. Now, I don't know if it's true, but you know you can, you can really imagine it's true uh, if you read this book. So, yeah, no, McGee, McGee uh, I think he was a, a chemist or a biologist, either way, a very clever man. And uh, he just has such a, a clear and insightful way of, of looking at food and, and breaking things down to their kind of simplest components and explaining stuff clearly. Um, so he'll take something like, uh, take a question that you know a child might ask you like, uh, why does cream whip into this kind of you know, thick whipped cream, but why can't we do that with milk? And you know, why can't you do that? Well, this book will tell you. So yeah, this was a book that really changed the way I think, thought about cooking, and uh, I definitely recommend it to anyone who's interested in the kind of more sciencey side. So the next book uh, I'm going to talk about is The Essentials of Classic Italian Cooking by Marcella Hazan. And this book was important to me because it taught me the importance of being able to cook with good ingredients simply and come out with something that was great in the sum of its parts. Until, until this point, I cooked uh, like Kenji's recipes, which you know had a lot of steps to them, and you know a lot of special ingredients and things like that to make them work, like baking soda, for instance. Uh, and I've cooked French recipes from Elizabeth David's books, where uh, you know there was again often a lot of steps and a lot of preparation, and you know special ingredients and things like Calvados and things you needed to buy. And I kind of had it in my head that that was what you needed to make a good meal. You needed some kind of ingredients that would make the dish special or some kind of you know uh, special effort to uh, do something differently or take a lot of time and actually uh, you know this book's kind of the polar opposite of that um, to illustrate my point one of the most famous recipes from this book is her tomato sauce which only has three ingredients uh, and that is just a tin of chopped tomatoes an onion and uh, butter, just maybe a tablespoon of butter. And you chop the onion in half, you put it in the tomatoes, you put the butter in, and just leave it for 40 minutes until the oil separates. And, I mean, if you tasted it, you, I mean, you really wouldn't expect that's what came out of it. It's just, it's so Moorish, you'll kind of have a bit and you'll find yourself kind of licking and finishing the pan afterwards. Um, and so it's just the simplicity that, that came from this book which, which really inspired me. Two other dishes I'd like to mention are um, chicken with two lemons. <laughs> I think that's a fantastic dish. You put two lemons inside a chicken, you sew it up, uh, and then the chicken starts to inflate slowly in the oven like a balloon as the skin separates. And uh, you, know, you get this fantastically uh, rendered skin and also like a nice kind of uh, oily, um, lemony kind of uh, 
gravy in the bottom of the pan as well. And uh, the other one, which again, just uh, three ingredients, really, really simple to make, but just a real knockout, is uh, chimney sweeps ice cream, which is just ice cream with ground coffee on top of it and uh, a shot of rum. Sounds nasty, right? <laughs> like, no one wants to eat like raw coffee grounds. Uh, and the rum probably isn't going to help that either. But honestly, it just it just works. It's just just a fantastic recipe, and I think all of them in this book are like that. They just they just work, and you're amazed that what comes out, you know, has come from the ingredients that you put in. So that was another book that really changed the way I thought about cooking. On the theme of simple, low effort recipes that are greater than the sum of their parts, it's got to be the roasting tin. This as you might be able to tell, it's not the kind of book I'd usually be attracted to if I was in the library. Uh, you know, I tend to like kind of, I guess I'm a bit more up myself, kind of want some slightly more high-minded books. And this one kind of had quite a poppy cover and, uh, you know, looked like the kind of books that come out every year and, you know, make no difference. But honestly, it's, it's probably probably in my top three cookbooks of all time and definitely the one I've cooked the most from uh, all its recipes just one tin kind of roasting tin recipes and uh, it's not so much the recipes in this book that are important but the methodology on house cook it just says you know pick a vegetable uh, pick some kind of carbohydrate add some kind of protein like meat or cheese uh, add some kind of like seeds or nuts or something to give it a bit of crunch add some salad at the end and there you go that that's it done and i mean <laughs> it's it's a winner you can use those recipes at um you know just for dinner with you and your flatmate or just on yourself by yourself it's fine or you can cook for you know something a bit more a bit more formal like a kind of a nice sunday lunch with the family or, or something like that and really they just they hit on both fronts they're simple they're classy and you know you don't really you don't need special ingredients to do them so that's why this is also one of the books that changed the way i thought about cooking on the topic of popular books salt fat acid heat another one which uh probably enough has been said about already but yeah especially the acid chapter for me i think that was the the most transformative i listened to this on spotify this isn't actually my copy of the book but uh i borrowed it for this video um and I'd recommend it if you've got Spotify. It's, it's a good audio book and uh, it's very compelling. Final book I want to talk about, uh, well done if you made it this far, is Roast Chicken and Other Stories by Simon Hopkinson. I love this book. Uh, I discovered it from uh, some articles that Jay Rayner had written about, uh, I think, I don't even remember the theme. It was like 10 cult classic cookbooks or 10 cookbooks he liked or something like that. Um, and the way he described this is a kind of a, a sleeper hit. It was, it barely sold any copies when it first came out. Um, you know, it wasn't very important, but it was also voted, I think, most, uh, most useful cookbook by chefs uh, in a poll done by the Waitrose magazine. Um, and even today, it's still a bit, of a, a bit of a sleeper hit. You can pick this up uh, off Amazon for something like two quid, reliably, uh, secondhand, which is not true of any of the other books I've mentioned. And um, honestly, it's just, it's just phenomenal. What Simon Hawkinson does really well, uh, actually, is, is plunder recipes from uh, Elizabeth David. Um, I mentioned Elizabeth David. She's not really, not really good for talking about recipes. She's not very exact. She kind of gives you quite vague instructions. What, Eliz what um, Simon Hawkinson has done is he's really refined those and uh, just just made them absolutely foolproof. So, um, Roast Chicken, the, the book that this, uh, <laughs> the recipe this book is named after, that is an Elizabeth David recipe that I think is actually from, from this book here, which Simon Hopkinson has taken and just kind of worked out all the little tweaks. And honestly, I, I use that recipe all the time and it never fails me. Um, I think one of the other things about this book, uh, is that actually it just it made me quite proud of uh, of some British British cuisine. You know, it, a lot of it is like good English food, which 
can be a bit of a, <laughs> a juxtaposition. They don't, the, the two words good and English food don't really go together. Um, but if anybody does good English food, I'd say it's Simon Hopkinson. You know, uh, kind of roast onions to go with something or, um, yeah, like a, a good roast duck or a roast chicken or something like that. Um, I, I'm still, I'm still, you know, discovering new recipes from this and, uh, yeah, it's definitely one I'd recommend adding to your collection for the two quid you can get it for. So that's been all the books which uh, have really changed the way I cook. There's plenty more I could mention. I mean, I've got a full shelf of cookbooks. There's also some I'd like to talk about which maybe, maybe I don't regret buying them, but they haven't really been quite so transformative as I hoped. So maybe that'll be the next video. But in the meantime, Thanks for watching.